So I saw See You Yesterday. Oh, cool, Very cool. powerful film. Um, first, I want to start with the Michael J. Fox cameo. What was your decision in doing that? It was supposed to have someone else um, play that cameo. Mm -hmm. A very, very famous uh, astrophysicist was supposed to play that cameo, but he was unavailable. And it was said, okay, what, who else can we do a cameo? We came with a list and I put Michael J. Fox on it just to shoot for the stars and see if we land on the moon. We landed in another galaxy getting him. <laughs> so, you know, my producers and I, we wrote a letter um, to Michael explaining how important it is for him to be in this film um, because we wanted to, you know, branch the audience and, and have a big surprise. And this would, and it's important for a teacher, uh, for teachers to see, you know, um, young African American children in, in their classroom that has great potential. Um, so that's that was the, one of the biggest decisions. And based off of Letty, he, he, he said yes. And then speaking about access to STEM for African American children, I feel like though the movie is set in a tone of telling a story about police brutality and things like that mm -hmm. i also got that from the movie too that messaging is like dang what could black kids do if they had the same opportunities as oh, all yeah. the other kids in stem yeah. so um was that a deliberate choice for you to include that in the story yes and no um i would say yes because when i was thinking about this a time travel like or, you know how how they're gonna do it it makes sense to have, um, I didn't want to have to go through a portal or have someone else build the time machine for them. It would be amazing if they did it for themselves. So young black kids would be able to see that they can be brilliant too as much as they are on screen. And then our main character, Claudette Josephine Walker, C.J. Walker, Madam mm -hmm. C.J. Walker. Named after Madam C.J. Walker, the famous uh, scientist. She's a famous uh, entrepreneur an activist, political activist, yeah, named after her specifically to um, to help the audience. Okay, if this one character is is, is really really good and in, in also in science and entrepreneurship, what other what other black other black um, inventors and scientists in our recent history are as brilliant as she is? So that was that was purposeful. And the choice to make her a girl, well, your main character a girl, as opposed to it being Sebastian. Yeah. At first it was Sebastian's story, but since the brother, it just felt like her character keeps talking to me when I was writing it. And her character just kept talking to me. It's like, you know, uh, I'm the one who's going through this pain. I'm the one who's who had to save the brother's life. And it just makes sense to make it her story. Just focus on her. And it's and I think it's powerful because uh, I never see a character like her before. A black woman um in stem trying to trying to save you know trying to be a superhero i think that's pretty cool yeah the fact that she was a superhero in your film was amazing but also the fact that you told the story of the police killing a young black man through the lens of mm -hmm. a black teenage girl as opposed to a black mom i thought was also powerful so mm -hmm. if you can speak about the decision to do that yeah yeah not um there's so it, when dealing with um, killings of black men, it's always a black woman is there to support us, and it just made sense. Like it just, there's no, there was no magical thought about it. It's just like this, this, this has to be the front front of it. As someone who is of Jamaican descent, Guyanese, yes, the West Indian culture was all throughout the movie. For me, it was the first time that I saw a representation of our culture that wasn't stereotyped and that was yeah, also a focus yeah. in a movie. Yeah. So. How important was that for you? Very. I'm 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 Guyanese. Um, well, I'm a Yankee. Yeah. I was born here. <laughs> My parents are from Guyana, and they struggled a lot to just even get a house in in, in Brooklyn. Um, I grew up in Coney Island, so we had a townhouse. And I always go to East Flatbush to get clothes from um, Vim's and uh, Jimmy Jazz and Bobby's, and I. I be of West Indian descent, I, I'd never seen that before. We always have a movie about Black American experience, but never about the Black immigrant experience. And we're, we're here, you know, we're real, and, and I want to show something different. So as a filmmaker, what was your parents' response? You know, she didn't, know, my mother didn't want to be. <laughs> I know how that came out. Like, I didn't come to America for you to be writing movies. Right, right. My mother was not having, when I told her the very first time I want to be a filmmaker, um, as a conservative Guyanese woman, she was not having it. <laughs> and now that you're a filmmaker, she's probably like, yes, look at what my son's doing. Because that's usually the flip. She actually refinanced her home to help me make the short film. Uh, that was my NYU thesis. You did an interview 
where you were like kind of um, talking about the critics of people, the critics that, the Netflix critics, like, why did you do a movie with Netflix? Um, yeah, man, it's like, it's like, why not? Like, that's the, that's the hottest studio right now in the business. Like, you know, why not? Like, I, you know, it, it, I needed the help to start somewhere. You need, everybody needed to start somewhere. No one, they, I, I, you know, we, Spike and I, we passed it through some studios and studios was not feeling it. And I said, okay, fine. I was gonna raise some money by myself, and but we got Netflix, and they, they champion it. Like we came in with a 80-page script, but we shot a 110-page script because they wanted more, and they gave me amazing notes. We, you know, uh, as a filmmaker, when you come in um, trying to do a first feature film, you're trying to limit, put a lot of limitations on yourself so you could, you spend as little as much money as possible and try to save money. Netflix like, hey, you can do more. I was like, I can do more. Shit, you know, and and you know, I, I think I think it's crazy, you know, that people want to like because right now there's other studios, you know, we got Disney Plus, we got Apple uh, Plus Two, like everybody's trying to copy off Netflix Netflix's game. So, you know, it's a great it's a great story. If you could time travel without potentially affecting the future, what's the one event you would want to change, and why? I'm not. I, I don't want to change anything. Everything that I am right now is because everything I've failed to do, all the mistakes I made, and whatnot. I like I like who I am right now because of everything I went through. And sometimes I wish I could, you know, not make 45 the president. <laughs>